Alrighty, good morning everyone. We're coming to you live from Wildlife Sydney uh, here in the beautiful Darling Harbour. And my name is Renee and today we're going to be meeting our creepiest and crawliest residents here. And I'm not talking about Kiva Beck over there and Kiva Tiff. What we'll be doing is meeting some of our smaller residents. So I will turn this camera around and we'll get to meet them. So we're going to head over here to Beck first. So what have you got for right, us, guys. Beck? Just take a minute to appreciate our bugs. Um, they are unbelievably uh, really important to our ecosystem. So just take a minute to appreciate them and um, have a listen about what we have to say. Um, so these girls are spiny leaf insects. Um, the way I can tell that they're females is because they're very fat, very, very fat. They're very thick. Um, they have very small wings. Um, and compared to that of a male, a males are usually really, really small very thin and they have very big wings and they're actually able to fly. Um, now a female stick insects, they are too heavy to fly. Um, so the reason why they're too heavy is actually because they're always full of eggs. So this big body here is full and full of eggs. They'll lay around hundreds um, in, their, in their adult lifetime. So um, she is always full of eggs and the really, really cool thing is that she doesn't, doesn't actually have to mate to um, produce eggs um, and those eggs that she produces will still hatch out so it's um, something really cool called parthenogenic um, and she doesn't have to mate with the, um, with the male so if, if the male doesn't come and find her she that's okay she'll still lay her eggs um, and they'll hatch out and they'll be clones of her um, so that's really really cool um, but what happens then is that if that clone clones itself and that clone clones itself and it just keeps going and it doesn't mate with the male, um, what can happen is um, things or they'll hatch out without a leg or something like that. Um, now, it's... What's that? Apparently there's no sound. Alright. <laughs> what we... Alright, what we might do is we'll so the sound is working from laptop devices but unfortunately there seems to be a few issues with some phone devices uh, we may continue um, apparently we can hear now so sorry back for the interruption uh, there's a few people just mentioning that they can't hear anything uh, but we'll continue on talking about our spiny leaf insects yeah. But as I was saying, if she keeps cloning herself, um, they probably start to arise. So one might hatch out without a leg or without a wing or something like that. Um, so basically what the male is there for is there for genetic diversity. Um, so that changes up their genes a little bit. Um, now these guys are found up in the northeast of Australia um, and they feed on um, eucalyptus and many different types of leaves. Um, now they're actually pretty harmless, they, they can't really hurt us at all. They do have a little bit of spikes going on, um, but it's completely harmless. Um, now what, you, well, what they do to keep safe out in the wild is they camouflage. Um, so she kind of looks like a dead um, crumpled or dead dry leaf. Um, so it's, it's, she, does, uh, she does camouflage really, really well. Um, she's able to stay still just like this one here um, for a long period of time so that's how she can stay nice and safe out in the wild because she does make a good snack for a bird or a possum or something like that. Now I might head over to Tiff so she can talk about our next bug and I'll pop these girls away. So whilst we are continuing this live stream, feel free to ask any questions we, that you may have just in those comment sections down below. But here we have Tiff, and what are you going to be telling us about today, Tiff? I have um, some really cool friends that you're going to think are really gross. I usually see these guys um, up north in Queensland. When I say the word, you're probably going to think of something that scurries away in the dark. Um, it's really um, gross to look at or think about. You don't want to anywhere near you, and I'm going to be handling one. So you might think this is really disgusting and gross, but it's not. 
just like Beck said, our insects are amazing for our ecosystem and these guys are just as amazing. Um, I have a cockroach, um, but I don't have just our cockroach you'll see in your household. I have the world's largest cockroach. So this is called a giant burrowing cockroach. And these guys aren't actually fully grown. So we do have a male and a female in here. Um, and they will actually be able to get bigger than this. Uh, these guys weigh about 19 grams right now, but they can weigh up to 35 grams. So they will get a little bit bigger in size. Uh, they can reach about eight to nine centimeters as well, to give you a bit of a perspective on just how long these guys are going to get. Now these guys are much different to the cockroaches you see in your household. So in your household, you're gonna have cockroaches that are actually introduced species to Australia. They're not native. These guys are native to Australia. So you will find them naturally up north in Queensland uh, in a beautiful uh, rainforesty kind of setting. And they love to eat dry eucalyptus leaves. Now these guys aren't gonna eat anything that's fresh. They're eating stuff that has already fallen onto the ground. So they're like little litter bugs, which is another one of their names. They also get called the rhinoceros bug as well, or the rhinoceros cockroach, sorry. Now, uh, the giant barring cockroach has no wings. So again, very different to that household cockroach you see. It will have wings. These guys don't have any at all. Now, many, many cockroach species. There's over 4,000 cockroach species. 450 live in Australia, uh, and we have the biggest one. So um, Australia has uh, some of the deadliest, um, some of the most dangerous, and some of the biggest animals you'll find in the world, um, and this is no exception. So this guy's pretty impressive. Now, they love to live in burrows. So they're gonna live in a burrow. They're gonna dig it. It's gonna be about one meter in length, and you can see those beautiful spade-like feet. So when they dig, they can actually push all the dirt away as they start to burrow. Oh, thank you, Beck. <laughs> They're quite tough. <laughs> so these guys are going to make themselves a lovely little burrow. They're going to have a little chamber at the end of that one meter burrow. And then when these guys want to come out to eat, they're going to come out at night time. They're going to gather their food up. Uh, it's kind of like a little loot of our dried eucalyptus. And that little loot they'll take back to their chamber and they'll actually eat it in their burrow. So they love to go back home to eat their food. So these guys are also kept as really awesome pets as well. You can see why, I think they are the best. We've got a couple of questions coming through. Yeah. One of which is, how do you know whether it's male or female? It's a great question. So I will try and just flip him for a second towards you a bit closer. Okay, so just above the head, there's this little scoop. So a male actually has quite um, a prominent scoop. While a female, she still has a scoop so she can dig, but hers isn't as prominent. Uh, the reason for the male to have such a prominent scoop is because he will use it to fight um, over territory or over finding a female. So they can use it to flip the other male over. As you saw before when he was on his back, it's not very easy for them to get the right way up. Uh, so if he can get his scoop underneath another male, flip him over, then he's pretty much guaranteed to get that female. So that's how you tell the difference, this little scoop just above their head. And can they fly? They cannot, so these guys have no wings, so no ability to fly. Uh, they are a burrowing species, so they love to dig down deep. So we've just got someone saying, it looks different compared to those ones that I see in my house. Mm. So That's why is true. that, Tiff? So the ones you see in your house are usually known uh, as an introduced species. Um, they're known as a German cockroach. Uh, those cockroaches um, obviously are adapting to live quite differently. Um, they live um, and eat a lot differently to these guys as well. Um, they have wings, so your uh, household cockroach is going to have wings underneath it and it can fly. These guys don't have those wings at all. Uh, they will probably get maybe up to like nine or eight grams. This guy can get up to 35 grams. So that's a really big Huge. difference that they have. Um, and these guys love, love uh, eucalyptus leaves that are dry. Well, you will probably know that the cockroaches in your household will eat leftover pizza. <laughs> so uh, much different. Uh, in those ways as well. You can see he's actually trying to butter his way. In. Yeah. <laughs> and how old can they get? These guys can live quite old. These guys can live up to 10 years old. So um, yeah, it's quite a long lifespan for such a cool little creature. Um, so yeah, these guys have quite a long lifespan for an insect. Brilliant. And is there anything else you'd like to tell us about these guys before we do move back on to Beck? Yeah, one really cool fact is that these guys are maternal. So they have live young and they take care of their young for about a year. So their mums are really motherly, um, have really good mother instincts and they will always bring back food to their little babies in their burrow. Another thing you wouldn't expect from an insect. So no that's way. incredible. Well, thank you so much for teaching us a little bit about these cockroaches. Hope you appreciate them. Yeah? <laughs> 
But we will head back on over to Beck here. And what are you going to be doing for us right now, Beck? So, uh, I will be feeding the most venomous spider in the whole entire world. <gasps> uh, I'll be feeding the most venomous spider. <laughs> Sydney funnel web spiders. Um, there's lots of different types of funnel webs, um, and the Sydney funnel web is the most venomous. Um, so her little bum there is just poking there, and then this one in here is somewhere in her burrow. So this is the kind of environment that they they like to live in. Um, and again, um, just want to say, take a minute, take a minute just to appreciate our bugs. They are really important to us. So before you say, oh yuck, that's gross, just take a minute, have a, have a watch, um, and listen to what Tip's going to say, because I'll be feeding, I need to focus. <laughs> so, Tip, go on. Yeah, so you're hearing my voice again. Uh, so Beck is going to be feeding them um, an animal called a woody, uh, so it is a different kind of cockroach. Uh, so these guys will eat insects. You can see it rearing up a little bit there. There she is, she's beautiful, isn't she? So our females and males are slightly different, and we're just getting a little bit of light on them for you, which I will be handling. Alrighty, here we go. So hopefully you guys can That's see her. Up. There we go. Beautiful defense from her there. So these guys are a burrowing species of spider. So they're not a spider that's gonna have a web up in a tree um, or in like the ceiling of your house. These guys are going to be burrowing uh, deep into the ground. Um, like lots of things in Australia, it's the name it as you see it. So it is a funnel web spider uh, because the way that it builds its web, uh, it likes to dig down deep in a burrow and then make, oh, there you go. Oh, sorry, <laughs> drop that. <laughs> uh, and make a funnel-like web so that when the insect crawls over that web, it's actually going to send a trigger down to the spider and she's gonna run out, she's gonna grab it, like she's right now. Yeah, there we go, yum, yum, yum. And she's going to eat her beautiful snack. It looks like her snack got away from her, but <laughs> she is more than capable of trying to get that again. You can see her body quite nicely now. She's gonna go back and get it. There we go. So as she goes into her little funnel and those webs are triggered by the uh, insects are crawling over the top, like you saw with speed, she's gonna come shooting out, she's gonna grab it, she's going to inject it with her venom, um, and then her venom is going to make it into like an insect slushy or insect milkshake. It's gonna melt the insides and she's gonna slurp out all that really good nutritional uh, tasting insect for her. So we've got a question, why do they bite? Why do they bite? Uh, well, these guys will bite their prey because they don't have a mouth like us. We open up our mouth, we have rows and rows of teeth, rows and rows of teeth. We have two rows of teeth, um, we have molars, we have all these things that we have adapted to be able to eat the food that we eat. These guys have adapted to be able to eat the food that they need to eat. So they don't have a mouth to be chewing uh, their food. So what they do is they bite because they need to inject their venom. Their venom then melts the food um, it dissolves the inside more or less, which is why I said it makes kind of like a little bit of a milkshake and then they'll actually suck um, up that animal. So, <laughs> oh, she's going for a bit of a hide. <laughs> so that is why they bite because um, that is the only way they can actually um, digest their food. They can, uh, can't actually uh, chew it down like we can. And where are they found? These guys are found in Sydney. Uh, so the world's most deadly spider, the Sydney funnel web, is definitely found um, in Sydney where we are. Excellent. And how long can these ones live for? These guys can live up to 25 years, so another quite impressive. That's, that's incredible. <laughs> and can you tell the difference between male and female just by looking at them? Yes, you can, yeah. Um, so the males, there we go, I'll give that to Beck. Uh, so actually, while we look at her underside, you will see uh, her legs that are up the top that she's kind of spurring up with. Now, a male is going to have hooks on those legs because when a male needs to mate with a female he's going to go find her he's going to trigger that web she's going to think it's food she's going to come running out and she's going to try to eat him because she doesn't think oh it might be a male it might be food she's just going to think it's food so the male has hooks on those legs so when she does that he can actually just quickly put his hooks on her fangs and push them away and then he can mate with her so females don't have those uh, but males do um, but you wouldn't want to be picking up a spider, checking if it has those hooks. Uh, so another way is uh, by their size. So males and females are different sizes. Uh, the females are actually bigger than what the males are. 
All righty, well, Kelsey has just said, Tiff, tell us your favorite spider fact. Tell us, oh man, my favorite spider, thanks Kelsey. Um, I think for these guys, I just like they need moisture to survive. So our funnel work can't be up in the open air uh, for hours and hours. They actually need to be underground in the moisture because their lungs will actually dry out. So for this guy to survive, it needs to be nice and moist. Um, otherwise he simply won't survive like you think other spiders would. And how many babies can they have? Hundreds of babies, yeah. So these guys are gonna have an egg sac. Um, and when you open up that egg sac, it kind of looks like a horror movie. Hundreds of babies are gonna be crawling out of that egg sac, so quite a lot. And is there any reason they are hairy? Yeah, so these guys will be able to sense um, lots of things around them. So those hairs are highly sensitive. So um, if I was to like swish my hand across, she would feel on those hairs that, that wind, that movement, um, which means that when she's underground and she's not actually seeing things out there, um, another way for her to be able to detect things in the wild or things around her, but those hairs will be quite extra tingly, like your spider senses are tingling. <laughs> those hairs are up on their edge. It's kind of like what that means. Brilliant. And I know people are terrified of spiders and snakes alike, but are they actively out to get us? No, so she doesn't look at you and think that you're an amazing mother that's gonna last her a year. Um, so not at all. So uh, you guys uh, might obviously see the size difference between her and us. Um, she does not look at us as something that is, uh, something she wants to chase away or hunt down. She would definitely wanna run away from us. Uh, there is no way she is gonna wanna take us on. Um, she's obviously gonna be defensive of the area that she lives, as you saw with Beck in the beginning, um, when she kind of opened up the little area that she lives, she got very defensive. And that's fair enough. Um, if someone was coming into my household, I'll get defensive as well. But there is no way that she's gonna come out and try and chase Beck down. So these guys are definitely more afraid of us than we are of them. And do they have any predators? Uh, these guys, yeah. So these guys can actually be eaten by a blue tongue lizard, also found um, probably around your household as well. Um, so the blue tongue lizard can actually eat um, the most venomous spider. So that's uh, a really cool thing about blue tongues. And why are they so important in our environment? Yeah, go for it, Rebecca. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so just like all bugs, they, they play a part in that sort of um, life cycle of all of our animals. Um, so, yeah, funnel webs, they'll eat all those pesty animals. Um, and again, like, well, they've been around for such a long time, why would we want to get rid of them? Um, so they've done so well so far, um, hundred, uh, millions of years. Um, so we might as well just let them live, basically. And they are, they're getting rid of those pesty animals. Yeah. Yep. And if, unfortunately, you are ever bitten by a spider, mm. how can you treat that site or give yourself the best chance of survival if it were to be a Sydney funnel web spider? So if it's Sydney funnel web spider, that is a pretty bad bite, I, I will admit. Um, so the best thing that you can do is stabilise yourself um, and put a bandage around the bite um, site and go to the hospital immediately. So they are extremely venomous. Um, again, they're not out to get you, so if you come across one, doesn't mean that you're gonna get bitten, but um, if you do, unfortunately, go to the hospital as soon as you can um, and stay nice and calm as possible, <laughs> not like her. <laughs> just a little bit defensive of her home but she's got her meal there she doesn't want us to steal it from her but thank you so much to Beck and Tiff here we have learned a lot about our creepy crawlies and I hope you guys have learned a thing or two if you did have any more questions please feel free to pop them down in the comments and we'll try and get to them as soon as we can uh, but thank you for tuning in and definitely stick around with our socials there will be more to come but that's for, all from us for now so see you next time